Hello fiddle pilots, Steinsch here. Today I'm going to talk about a Viper and a Hornet in DCS. New F-16 and F-18 pilots are often surprised by how long their landing roll is on a runway. I can totally relate. Coming from the F-15 and the Mirage, this was one of the first things I noticed when I transitioned to the latest US fighters. Of course, this can be explained easily I guess. Back in the 70s, the Viper was meant to be a lightweight air-to-air -air fighter and therefore heavy-duty wheel brakes were not incorporated in its design. Similarly, the Hornet was expected to land primarily on a resting wire-equipped aircraft carriers, so powerful wheel brakes were likely not a top priority. Still, braking ability of both planes is usually adequate to land normally at most, if not all airfields in DCS. If you arrive on speed and your weight is within parameters, landing should never be a problem. But, sometimes, being able to land normally is not enough, and minimizing the landing roll of your 20-ton monster is critical. In this video, I'll show you how to do just that with both planes. It can be useful if sections of your airfield's runway are damaged or occupied, uh, you have to divert to an airfield with a short runway, if you are landing heavy for some reason, for example you don't have time to them fuel, or the scenario gives your coalition a limited quantity of weapons at your airbase, and you don't want to jettison what you still have on board, or if just like me, you're an efficiency freak and just want to get off the runway as quickly as possible. For this demo, the Hornet and the Viper would be fully loaded with fuel and weapons, close to or even exceeding their maximum takeoff weight and I will land them at one of the shortest operational runways on the Caucasus map. This is of course not realistic, but it will show that runway overruns are not inevitable in DCS, contrary to the end of Maverick. The end is inevitable, Maverick. You kind of set it for extinction. Thank you, Admiral. Now, let's get started. So here we are, flying a Viper, we've got 9,000 pounds of fuel on board and we're loaded with four 2,000 pound GBU tents and four armorers. We are approaching the Vodorozisk Airbase, which has a single 1,800 meter long runway. That's about 5,900 feet, so that's a fairly short runway by DCS standards. So I'm not going to explain how to land the plane in detail, I think that has been covered fairly well by WAGs and others. Uh, I'm just going to focus on what needs to be done to shorten the landing wall. I am now on final, so I'm going to set my AOA higher than the usual 11 degrees. Uh, 12 to 12.5 should be enough to give me a lower speed for touchdown without risking the stall during the flare. On touchdown, keep your nose up to benefit from aerodynamic braking, and once the wheels are firmly on the ground, apply full wheel brakes. And once the wheel brakes become effective, the nose starts falling off. Yep, nose wheel finally on the runway, fully deploy the air brakes, and pull the stick aft to increase drag with the stabilizers, and keep applying maximum pressure on the wheel brakes at the same time.
And that's it. That's how you minimize your landing roll with the Viper. All right, here's a Hornet with a similar loadout. Four GBU tanks, two Sparrows, two Sanguinus, a TGP and full internal and external fuel tanks. Now, to minimize the landing roll of the Hornet, the real-world NATOPS manual recommends a normal on-speed approach and touchdown. And this is to be immediately followed by smooth full pressure on wheel brakes. Well, this is DCS and I think we can do better than that. As for normal approach, make sure your flaps are fully deployed. But in this case, manage your throttle and trim to set your airway to slightly slow. A 20 to 30 feet AGL, flare. Yes, I know, maybe pilots don't do that, but I insist, flare, because this will decrease your airspeed by 10 to 15 knots before touchdown. Main gear on the ground, extend the air brake and let the nose fall immediately. Apply full pressure on wheel brakes, make sure engines are on ground idle, retract flaps to put more weight on wheels, and pull the stick fully aft to maximize stabilizer's aerodynamic braking. I've included a link to this mission file in the video description, should you want to practice. And I guarantee you, if you manage to land a fully loaded Viper or Hornet at Novo Air Base, you'll be able to land anywhere in DCS. If you want to know which of the Viper or the Hornet has the best brakes, I don't have an answer for that. Breaking an airplane is a process. It's not limited to the power of wheel brakes alone. But I can answer the question, which plane stops the fastest on the runway? under parameters X and Y. We saw before that under extreme load, the Viper and the Hornet short landing rolls are about the same. So here's a comparison side by side of the Viper and Hornet landing by the book, with a more realistic load of 20% fuel and two FOX-2 missiles. I'll then compare the landing rolls with all other conventional DCS aircraft landed under the same conditions. And spoiler alert, the Viper and the Hornet both need 950 meters 
or 3,100 feet to come to a full stop after a touchdown. It's a very surprising result, as I expected the Hornet to have a slight edge here. So, I've test landed all high performance planes I have available, following the short landing procedures of course. And assuming all planes touch down on the runway number, here's where they will have stopped with a 5 knots headwind. Surprisingly, the SU-27 came on top. I was expecting the Vegan to take the number one spot, but no. Looks like the flanker's dual drag chute and powerful wheel brakes are extremely effective. In the number 2 position, we have the SU-25, the T version. And again, the dual drag chute helps immensely, as I know for a fact that the wheel brakes of the frog foot in DCS are almost completely useless. Ranking number 3 is the Jeff, a lightweight fighter also equipped with a drag chute. The Tomcat fares fairly well, thanks to its low approach speed and powerful wheel brakes. The Vegan is number 5 which is kind of disappointing, but it can back up and has a quick turnaround time, so yeah, it's still cool. Next come the Warthog, the Mirage, the Sea Flanker and the MiG-21. Note that with the huge Delta Wing, super effective for aerodynamic braking, in my view there is no reason to equip the Mirage with drag shoes. And the Sea Flanker also performs pretty well here, considering it doesn't use a chute. Next come the F-15 and the MiG-29. And far down the road, we have the Harrier. So, for an apple-to-apple -apple comparison, I landed it conventionally, and it sucks. Despite using its power nozzle braking ability, it's very disappointing. So that's another mid busting. And finally, I present to you the useless twins. Okay, so let's be fair. They can still land with less than 50% of the length of a regular roadway. So uh, they're not too shabby. Still, their braking systems are the shittiest in DCS. But who cares, right? Happy Linux guys.